Hello, my name is Bafar Ide. I'm an attending physician and surgeon at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in the Urology Service. The title of my talk is The Role of MR-Targeted Prostate Biopsy in Active Surveillance. We will focus on techniques, technology, and outcomes. Firstly, my disclosures. I'll be presenting on MR-targeted biopsy using the Coella system. This is a system we use at our hospital. I have received an honorarium for educational webinars with Coelus. I'm also a consultant for Myriad Genetics. That will not be a part of this talk today. So this talk will outline studies defining the role of MR-targeted prostate biopsy for detecting disease progression and active surveillance. We will focus on comparing image fusion and cognitive biopsy, the effectiveness of MR-targeted prostate biopsy, and the role of MRI in active surveillance. Before we get started, as I mentioned, specifically we're using the Coella system at my hospital. This is a 3D ultrasound probe, which uses a full 3D volume scan and manual image registration. Then it uses organ-based tracking with automatic recalculation of prostate position to compensate for patient movement and deformation of the prostate. And we also utilize the prostate cardiography, which is tracking where we placed our prostate biopsies as these patients return in the future for surveillance biopsies. So the incorporation of multi-parametric MRI and image-based tracking software has improved the detection of grade group two or higher prostate cancer. When we define cognitive fusion or visually targeted, looking at the first row, this is taking our MRI image, combining with an ultrasound image that we visualize, and we try to cognitively bring those two images together and essentially guess where on the ultrasound we think the MRI is suggesting. The next level of precision is to go to elastic fusion where you take an MRI image, you place this on top of an ultrasound image and use that as the standard to perform biopsies. Obviously the system tries to compensate by pulling the MRI image software and the image of the ultrasound together. This is done manually. The system that we use takes the elastic fusion from the MRI combining with the ultrasound and it recalculates that fusion system every time we undergo a biopsy, in essence, compensating for any motion. So what I will be focusing on in the first slide is comparing ultrasound fusion using cognitive targeting. This is a study we did at Memorial Sloan Kettering. And although like many studies in the literature, cognitive targeting and MR targeted fusion show very similar results as far as detecting significant cancer. However, we noted that the location of the cancer mattered based on the type of technology used. And in fact, MR ultrasound software fusion prostate biopsy techniques detected more cancer, specifically in the transition zone and mid gland compared to visually or cognitive targeted biopsies. In this landmark trial, the precision study comparing standard systematic biopsy versus MR targeted only biopsy, it was very clear based on various forms of analysis that patients who had an MR targeted only biopsy, the detection of significant cancer was higher than simple systematic only ultrasound biopsy without MRI guidance. So this suggests that using MRI for biopsy and combining that with an ultrasound system that fuses the ultrasound and MRI provides better prostate cancer detection. MR targeted prostate biopsy improves detection of higher grade disease for men on active surveillance. This was a study again performed in our center in which we looked at our active surveillance population and asked the question of those patients who underwent disease progression. If we had only done an MR targeted plus systematic biopsy versus MR target alone or only systematic biopsy, what is the difference in detection of higher grade cancer? It's very clear that the number of missed cancers was the lowest in the group that underwent MR targeted plus systematic biopsy. 
Therefore, we advocate for MR targeted biopsy plus systematic biopsy in our patients. The reason we include systematic biopsy, this was our data again, showing that despite detecting the most higher grade cancer foci with MR targeted prostate biopsy, systematic biopsy is still needed in cases of tumors that are not visible on MRI. If you look at this study, looking at the x-axis, this is our MRI lesion score. Basically, lesions that were identified as a 3, 4, or 5 were visible, but in patients who underwent biopsy, upwards of 10 to 12 percent of patients who had no detectable lesion or an area outside of the targeted biopsy still had higher grade disease detected, suggesting a role for systematic biopsies. When we look at changes of MRI for patients who are on active surveillance, this was a study, again, in our cohort of patients looking at three-year outcomes. We see that 22% of patients on active surveillance experienced an increase in their PIRADS or MRI lesion score on surveillance MRI. Therefore, this shows that monitoring men on active surveillance using MRI is important and provides information to help detect disease progression. However, using changes in MRI in clinical stage only to trigger biopsy fails to detect many higher grade cancers. Therefore, scheduled MR targeted prostate biopsy is recommended for men on active surveillance. We estimated that if we only had used an increase in the MRI PIRADS score to trigger a prostate biopsy, approximately 51% of patients may have had their higher grade cancers missed. It is important to note that as we discuss prostate biopsy, there has been a transition from transrectal biopsy to transperineal biopsy. This study that was completed in Australia across major healthcare systems demonstrates that there is now growing number of biopsies performed that are transperineal compared to transrectal. If you look at the first figure labeled A, we see that by 2017, the majority of biopsies performed were transperineal biopsies. And what's clear if we look at figure B is these patients have a lower cost of the healthcare system. And this is due to lower complication rates, specifically infectious complications. So it's important to realize as we move forward that technology that is capable of transitioning from a transrectal to transperineal prostate biopsy is key. Again, the system that we utilize within the same platform, the Coalis Trinity system directly tracks prostate movement and deformation during biopsy and enables the seamless transition to transperineal procedures. And in our clinics, we're also transitioning to this technique. Importantly, we have a large study being led by Weill Cornell Hospital in which we will test the hypothesis whether transperineal biopsy is associated with lower infectious complications without compromising cancer detection rates. So in conclusion, incorporation of MR-targeted prostate biopsy improves detection of higher grade prostate cancer and reduces misclassification of patients with low risk disease. MR-targeted biopsy using software fusion improves detection of higher grade cancer compared to visually or cognitively targeted biopsies. Systematic biopsy cores added to the MR-targeted biopsy improves overall detection of higher grade cancer. And the seamless transition from transrectal to transperineal biopsy techniques is key to reduce infectious complications. Thank you very much.